for graphing rational functions, these are some things that we want to keep in mind. So the first thing we want to do is find vertical asymptotes, if any. So for vertical asymptotes, we always look at the denominator. So in this case, we have a denominator of x squared minus x minus 6, and we want to see when that equals 0. So this is an example of that factor, so I'm just going to go ahead and factor it into x minus 3, x plus 2, and we're setting it equal to 0, and we're actually going to get two results from here. So essentially we set x minus 3 equal to 0, and then we set x plus 2 equal to 0. So what we end up with are vertical asymptotes. Just label them here. At one at x is equal to 3, and another one at x is equal to negative 2. So then let's move on to horizontal asymptotes, if any. So for horizontal asymptote, we're going to look at the degree. So if we look at the degrees, the degree of the numerator is 1. And if I look at the denominator, the degree of the denominator is 2. So if you look back, there were those three possibilities. And in this case, the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator, then it's always going to be at y is equal to 0. So if I label that, we have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0. So one thing about 2 and 3, so horizontal and oblique asymptotes, you can only have one or the other. So in this case, I have a horizontal asymptote. So I know right away I don't have an oblique asymptote. But again, if you compare the degrees, it was just the rule of degree. So oblique is if the numerator is larger, and specifically larger by 1. So there's going to be none for the oblique asymptotes. So let's go ahead and graph the asymptotes. I'll use a different color here. So we've got x is equal to 3 first. So if I graph x is equal to 3, that's a vertical line at 3. So we could have, sorry, it's a little sloppy. <laughs> okay, so there's our first vertical asymptote at x is equal to 3. Our second vertical asymptote is at x is equal to negative 2. So I'm going to, right here, draw a vertical line at x equals negative 2. And we can also um, even just go ahead and label them, too, if we want. So this was x equal 3, and this one was x is equal to negative 2. And then at the same time, I'll graph our horizontal asymptote, which is y is equal to 0. So right all along the x-axis, and that's our y is equal to 0. So these are all of our boundary lines, um, but before I start to actually construct the graph, I actually want to go ahead and just try to identify some points. So we'll look at the fifth part here. So I'm just going to make a table of values. So let me just start by labeling x and y, and then we want to find some different points. So some points that I'm going to find, um, since we had a vertical asymptote at x is equal to negative 2 and x equals 3, I'm actually going to want to choose points in between each interval. So I might choose a point, let's say, like x is equal to negative 3. And then we want something in between negative 2 is that right? Negative 2 and 3, so maybe I'll choose x is equal to 0. And then I may want to choose something larger than x is equal to 3. So maybe we might choose something like 4, whichever we want. Okay, so if we go ahead here and plug it into our function, so if I plug in 
x is equal to negative 3, and so I'm going back and plugging it into this function right here. f of x is equal to x minus 2 over x squared minus x minus 6. So if I plug in x is equal to negative 3, what, what you should end up with is negative 5 divided by 6. If you plug in x is equal to 0, you should get y is equal to 1 third. And if you plug in 4, you should end up with 2 divided by 6, which simplifies to 1 third again. So let me plot these three points. So let's see. So negative 3 and negative 5, 6. So negative 3, so negative 5 over 6 is pretty close to negative 1. So I'm going to put that point right about here. So the other point we have is 0 and 1 third. So 0 and 1 third, so that would be right about up here. Then we have 4 and 1 third. So let me go to the point 4 and plot 1 third, which would be right about here. I'll just get as close as I can, so we're sort of approximating here a little bit. So the other thing I want to pick in terms of a point to plot um, actually has to do with the horizontal asymptote. So remember, the horizontal asymptote tells what's happening at the endpoints. So way left, it's going to go towards y is equal to 0, and far to the right, it's going to go towards y is equal to 0. But it may actually cross through at some points in the middle. So another point that I'm going to want to try is if we have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0, let's actually plug in y is equal to 0 into our function and then see if we can get a value back. If we can't get a value back, then that means it actually never crosses. So I'm just going to actually go and write out to the side here a little bit. Um, if I'm letting y equal 0, then what we get is y, which is 0. So we get 0 is equal to x minus 2 over x squared minus x minus 6. So to find the order pair, essentially I'm plugging in 0 for y instead of plugging in 0 or any other number into the x's. So what happens here though when I'm actually solving it um, is I may want to multiply everything by the denominator which is the x squared, let's see if I can squeeze it in here, x squared minus x minus 6, multiply over here, x squared minus x minus 6. And what happens is on the left side, well, anything multiplied by 0 is just 0. So we get 0 is equal to, and then on the right side, x squared minus x minus 6 cancels out with the x minus, x squared minus x minus 6 in the denominator. So you get 0 is equal to x minus 2. So if you solve that, we see that it actually does cross once. Um, so it crosses the horizontal asymptote at x is equal to 2, which basically means we found the ordered pair that when y is equal to 0, x is equal to 2. So let me go ahead and plot that point. So we have the point 2, 0, which is right here. So the last thing that I want to check when I'm thinking about my graph is I'm going to choose another point. Um, and I actually want to choose a point now between 2 and 3 because when it's crossing, does it actually cross through or does it bounce back up? Which is sort of a similar question we were looking at with polynomial graphs. So let me just choose another x value here. So let's say maybe we choose 2.5. So if you plug in two and a half, or it's probably easier if you just go ahead and plug in 2.5, you should end up with 0.5 in the numerator and negative 6.25 in the denominator. So your final resu result should be about negative 0.0. .0 Seven, seven. So if I go ahead and try to graph that point, I have the ordered pair 2.5 and negative 0 0.077.
so let's see here, so 2.5, and that just basically means it's going to be a little bit below that horizontal asymptote, so somewhere right about here. So now we're ready to finally construct the graph. So I start in regions, so I'm going to start to the left of the first vertical asymptote. So I have my point, and so I know that since it doesn't cross the horizontal asymptote in that region, the only thing that can happen is that it starts at that point and it just goes towards y is equal to zero, or towards the, that horizontal asymptote. And then we said it never ever crosses the vertical asymptote, so from that point here, it's just going to go in the downward direction right along that vertical asymptote. So then we move to that middle region, so between negative 2 and 3. So I start with my first ordered pair that I have, which is that point at 0. And so I know on the left side, I already, it doesn't go downwards, because that would mean it has to cross the horizontal asymptote. We found it, that only happens once. So the only option is to go up towards the vertical asymptote and never crossing the vertical asymptote. So then I basically have a few points now, so I can just connect those points together. And once I get down to that third point, well, it doesn't cross the horizontal asymptote anymore, so the only option is to go down towards the vertical asymptote. And then the last region, the only options we have are to go up towards the vertical asymptote and down towards the horizontal asymptote.